Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. Joining me right now on the phone is Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee and one of the loudest voices of opposition to American military intervention in Syria. Thanks for being with us today, sir. Glad to be with you. All right, so President Bashar Assad now says that he will only give up his chemical weapons if the U.S. stops arming Syrian rebels. Is that a fair and viable request for Assad to be making at this time? You know, I don't know that there is any kind of uh, fair request to come from, you know, a guy who just gassed his people. But my hope is that some kind of diplomatic solution can come of this. But I think the, the back and forth publicly of, you know, Putin poking his finger in our face and, you know, writing editorials, instructing the U.S., that kind of stuff publicly probably doesn't further, you know, the uh, diplomatic process, nor does trying to, uh, you know, make the negotiations in public of saying what exactly you'll accept and not accept. But my hope is, though, that there is a way that the chemical weapons store could become under international control, and I think that would be a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, so we are seeing this both from Assad and from Putin. You talked about this as kind of chest-thumping. Uh, Putin seems to think he has some you know, the upper hand here and all this. But we also hear, heard Assad tell Russian TV on Thursday that the threat of American military action did not affect his decision to hand over his chemical weapons. How do you view Assad's uh, decision, and are you confident that he will follow through? You know, I don't know whether he's sincere or not. I do know, though, that if we decide to go the military route, that bombing aside, I have uh, serious doubts will have any influence or effect in a positive action. In fact, I think if we destabilize Assad through a bombing campaign, that the chemical weapons could, in all likelihood, uh, get under the control of Al Qaeda, Al Nusra, or extreme elements, um, you know, of the Islamic uh, rebels force. So I do worry about that. I worry about, you know, there's a half a million refugees in Jordan right now. I worry that we bomb Assad, that there'll be more refugees. In fact, a great increase in the number of refugees fleeing into Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan. I also worry that if we attack Assad, that he's more likely to act irrationally and either bomb uh, Turkey or Israel or Jordan and I really, just about every bad outcome that you can imagine, I think, could be made worse by bombing Assad. Uh, you mentioned the humanitarian toll this is taking in terms of the refugees, a huge uh, issue that has not been talked about as much. Uh, you've also said that the anti-war movement here in the U.S., and in part the libertarian wing of the Republican Party, as well as some liberal Democrats as well, may have played a role in helping this diplomatic solution develop. Specifically, you said one thing is for certain, the chance of diplomacy would not have occurred without strong voices against an immediate bombing campaign. Is that the only factor here, or do you think that there may have been a part of the, you know, part of this may have been that threat of military action uh, pushing Assad and Russia to, to take this step? You know, I think it's hard to tell. You have to get inside the mind of your opponent and decide why your opponent decided to do something. I think it's not an unreasonable argument for President Obama to say, well, they would have never done this. You know, on the other side of that argument, though, the Russians have already been at the negotiating table for over a year. At the Geneva One, they had uh, the reports were that they had already come to an agreement that there would be a transitional government without Assad. So really, I think there has been some uh, some uh, willingness on the part of the Russians to negotiate. I also think, uh, I'm, and I can't tell you whether they're going to be sincere, whether these will be valid negotiations, but I can tell you that to get to a better position in the Middle East than where we are, to a position where Assad is gone, where the chemical weapons are stable, where we're not getting nuclear weapons in Iran, Russia could be a big part of that. If Russia wanted to be a big player in the world and they wanted to use their uh, their their power within the world structure for good, they have a great ability to do it because, you know, we've restricted our trade to Syria, we've restricted our trade to Iran, but Russia still trades with them. So if Russia were to say, hey, guys, if, if this does not get to a level where, you know, you quit developing uranium or enriching uranium, we're going to quit trading with you, then I think perhaps they could bring Iran back into the civilized world. Now, we talked about uh, Putin's New York Times editorial at the beginning of this interview. He blasted American exceptionalism. What do you what do you make of the, of the Putin editorial? What do you think about it? Well, you know, I'm not so sure it's helpful, you know, to poke a finger uh, at America and to jab at us, because I think even though it's just rhetoric, it uh, doesn't help to calm the situation. It seems like he's uh, 
rather enjoying, you know, prodding us and uh, inflaming the situation. I mean, if you want to get to a diplomatic solution, you don't go to your counterpart across the table and call them names. What you would do is either be quiet or try to say conciliatory words. So I think it it makes some of us who really want a diplomatic solution question, you know, their sincerity if they're going to go around, you know, beating their chest. It does kind of help uh, President Obama illustrate that point that he made referring to Putin as a, as a schoolboy, kind of a, a troublemaker. And I get this. That's kind of what I thought of when I read this editorial. Uh, let's talk about uh, Iran as well. You've made it clear from time to time that the U.S. Uh, should use force um, if Iran does continue to, to develop its nuclear program, do you believe that at some point, if Iran does not comply with international demands, that the U.S. or Israel should have the right to use force to stop Iran's nuclear program? Different than chemical weapons, we're talking about nuclear weapons. You know, I think all options have to be on the table. I think that with regard to hypothetical situations, it, I think it is better to be somewhat ambiguous in the sense that there's a, a doctrine that people refer to as strategic ambiguity. And the, the reason why you're ambiguous is you don't pre-announce what you're going to do. It, it's kind of like in this Syrian situation, the president has pre-announced that it's going to be an unbelievably small war. Well, if you're on the other side of this, you say, well, heck, I'll just withstand that if it's going to be unbelievably small. So you don't really announce in advance, uh, you know, what you're going to do or what you would do in specific situations, other than to let Iran know that all options would be on the table and that if they want to be part of the world's community and they want to not uh, live in fear of major war, they should uh, try to cooperate with the world's community. And no matter what happens uh, in Geneva, where Secretary of State John Kerry is now working with uh, Russian officials, recent polls show that Americans are overwhelmingly against uh, action in Syria. Obviously, in Iraq and Afghanistan are huge factors here. But what do you say about some folks who express concerns that say uh, folks like yourself are pushing America towards a new age of isolationism? You know, I think that uh, they misunderstand, you know, where I'm coming from. Um, I would call myself a foreign policy realist. I believe that we do have American interest in the Middle East. I believe stability is in our best interest. I believe that uh, Israel, Jordan, Turkey are all longstanding allies and that we do have an interest in uh, uh, they're they're not uh, being attacked or being overrun by over co other countries. So, no, I think we... I don't think there's any part of, of what I'm talking about that talks about isolating the world. I think sometimes that uh, when you react unilaterally, you're isolating yourself. So uh, really, I would say that uh, my belief is that we do engage the world, we uh, trade with the world, we have diplomacy with the world, and we try to find solutions that are that where a war is the last resort. But I don't think that uh, in any way, shape, or form is referring to isolating us. All right, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, thank you very much for your time, sir. A pleasure talking with you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.